let me explain as simple as possible what the heck an MCP server is and if we should even care. Welcome back y'all. In today's video, I'm gonna go over what an MCP server is. I'm gonna draw it on the whiteboard and make it as simple as possible. As I've seen a lot of videos on this topic and they're just using a bunch of developer jargon that's just not necessary. So I'm gonna explain this in just like regular English so we can understand the use case of MCP server. But I wanna be quite honest with y'all, I'm not sure why there is so much hype around this. After explaining this to y'all, some of y'all are gonna be like, Corbin, what are you talking about? Like, I love this, this deserves the hype. But I think like 90 to 80% of y'all are gonna be like, okay, this is what I thought it was. Why the heck is every influencer, LinkedIn, YouTube, why is everyone just going crazy over this? I don't get it. Let me explain it. Also new hat, new hat alert. Here's the situation. All I want you to think about when it comes to an MCP server is this is a layer. And what this layer allows us to do is access either data in a database or alternatively APIs that are provided by external applications. I'll make it sound simpler. Idea being this. So we have our LLM, let's just call it ChatGBT or Claude. For example, what you've probably seen in your feed, you can do with Claude Desktop. But the idea is that using something like Claude Desktop, let's just call it AI, we can now access an MCP server hosted by a specific software application. What's an example of this? I think probably the best example that is probably hitting everyone's feed right now is Zapier, right? The idea is that you can set up a MCP server of Zapier. And what this allows us to do is access all these different applications in our LLM. So such as Google Sheets, Gmail, the idea being this, right? We have our LLM, Claude Desktop, Zapier MCP server. And then from here, we can be like, okay, since we're accessing our MCP server, which is Zapier in this context, we can access Gmail. And with Gmail, that's really small. With Gmail, which is like that block right there, we can then not go through all the difficultness of setting up API custom in code. Like we don't care, I don't wanna do that. We can now conversate, talk to ChatGPT desktop over here, ask it to do a specific action of sending an email, and then the MCP server is that layer in the middle that allows it to actually do that action. I'm talking to Claude, send an email about pineapples. And then with that information, Claude right here is gonna be able to communicate with this MCP server, which is Zapier, which then will send out that email here. We can also use this and leverage this in a way of essentially, instead of maybe doing an action, like a send an email, we can access a external database as well. So instead of the process and pipeline ending at the email being sent here, we can maybe you know go to a database, grab information from said database through this little MCP layer here and retrieve it back to our LLM. This is bare bones. This is me explaining it in just regular English rather than going crazy on you. Cause honestly, what you just saw right there probably answered half of your questions of just like, okay, what's the big deal then? We've been able to do this cause we have been able to do this. Now I have tutorial videos showing you how to set this up with Zapier and also another one coming out showing you how to set this up with data button, which is like your own custom API. So rather it being from like a, you know, standalone, we know Gmail, everyone loves Gmail. Maybe you built your own software, you can access your own API internally in a chat like conversation, Claude desktop. What's kind of weird here, and I'm assuming other people talked about it, maybe they haven't, but we've been able to do this for quite a while now. This just shows you the power of marketing. Now, what I'm about to show you we've been able to do for the probably the last year, maybe two years, honestly, at this point. If you're not familiar with GBTs, uh, they're essentially lasered in versions of ChatGBT. We can do a bunch of cool stuff here, but we could always do the ability of custom actions. That right there, we've been able to do for the last one to two years. Now, there's a very specific action I'm referring to that would have allowed us to create this kind of MCP server-like context, which was Zapier AI Actions GBTs accessing Zapier's server to do a specific action to then retrieve data from our GBT. This, we can always do this. Now, obviously with an MCP server, there's a little bit more depth involved here when it comes to how complex you can get, but the baseline of our ability to access external data sources, API databases, we've always been able to do for the last two years. For some reason, <laughs> MCP server is something new. Not really. I'm not making this to bash on MCP servers. I'm making this because I'm trying to give y'all clarity because man, I've been seeing my feed, people just wilding out. People just saying that this is brand new. Oh my gosh, like look what you can do in AI now. We could always have done that. Now, some of y'all are gonna try to get really technical in the comments, well, Corbin, this, 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 and this. At the end of the day, one of the major value points that's being shown here is our ability to access external APIs 
in an LLM, whether that is cursor, quad desktop, windsurf, whatever it may be. That value point and that capability was already possible. It's been possible. Beyond that, I see MCP servers. It probably has its value in a very, very specific circumstance and niche. I think for most of us, this is kind of just like, let's just have some fun. This is kind of cool. Let's proceed. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. M C P A B C A B C D E F. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.